What is up, YouTube? All right, today we're going to talk about tone wood. So, if you've been on the internet for longer than like five minutes and you're a guitar player, you've probably seen dozens of videos talking about tone wood and how it affects the guitar, what different kinds of tone wood have different kinds of tonal properties, all this other kind of stuff, right? So, there's some truth. And some of it, and a lot of it, is just snake oil. So, I'm going to kind of break down how tone wood affects the guitar, the different things it does, different kinds of woods, how they sound. Um, I'm going to kind of give a little bit of background as to why I have the credentials to even make this critique, right? So, <clears throat> I work at a violin shop. I've worked at this violin shop for over a decade, and I do set up on violins, cellos, upright basses all day long. That's my job. It's what I do. And tonally tuning an acoustic instrument for years and years and years, you come to realize that the different kinds of woods have a big difference in how acoustic instruments sound. Now, before I started working at the violin shop, I went to a guitar luthier school to learn how to work on guitars. So, I have a pretty good background in this stuff. Um, and as far as acoustic instruments go, guitars, mandolins, basses, cellos, violins, whatever, the wood is the most important thing. Uh, different kinds of woods have different tonal properties. Um, they resonate differently. You know, especially in a, when you're miking up an acoustic guitar, or any acoustic instrument for that matter, to get the tone captured and recorded, right? The wood makes all the difference. Um, and a lot of people think that that also applies to electric guitars. Now, are they wrong? Not necessarily. But are they right? Not in the way they think they are. So, let me explain. <clears throat> yes, the wood is going to have an impact. Right? Like, on an acoustic guitar, maple does sound brighter than mahogany does. In the context of an electric guitar, though... Let's talk about because this is really the main point of this video, right? Like we, I think it's kind of under, I think it's kind of assumed that like yeah, acoustic instruments, the wood is what matters, um, and people just kind of also assume well, if it matters on an acoustic guitar, it also matters on an electric guitar. So <clears throat> the question isn't uh, the way I see it framed a lot is the question isn't um, does it have an effect? The question is does it matter? Right, that's two different things. So it does have an effect, but does it matter? My answer to the question, does it matter on an electric guitar, is no. And let me explain why. Because I've already said it has an effect, but we've already talked about how on an acoustic guitar, that's where all your sound comes from is the kind of wood you have. Right. On an electric guitar, there's so much else going on here, right? You've got pickups, you've got the pots, the potentiometers, you've got the capacitors, um, you've got all kinds of different methods of construction. You've got bolt on necks, you've got set necks, you've got neck through guitars. So, there's all these different kinds of construction. There's all these different components. And then let's not even get into amps, pedals, right? So, <clears throat> does it matter that this Les Paul here has a rosewood fingerboard and this Les Paul has an ebony fingerboard? Does it matter? Not really, no. Um, on an acoustic guitar, 
you might notice that a guitar with an ebony fingerboard is a little brighter than a guitar with a rosewood fingerboard, or a guitar with a maple fingerboard is a little brighter, or a mahogany guitar is a little darker, and a maple guitar is a little brighter. You might really hear that in an acoustic guitar. In an electric guitar, it's not happening. I mean, okay, no, I, let me take it back. It's not not happening, is what I mean. It's not not happening. It's just happening at such a minuscule level that it is statistically irrelevant to everything else happening in your guitar rig, right? So, <clears throat> like, take, like, a, a, let's take the Strat, for example. If I, if you, people, you'll see people say stuff like this online all the time, right? Like, maple fingerboard Strats sound brighter than rosewood fingerboard Strats. They're not necessarily wrong, but this is how loud an unplugged electric guitar is, right? It only matters as loud as you can hear the instrument acoustically. It doesn't really matter once you get it plugged into an amp or once you plug it into your pedal board, and then you plug your pedal board into your amp, and then you turn your amp on, and so not only are you running through the pickups and the potentiometers and the capacitors and the guitar cable, which guitar cables have capacitance, and different kinds of guitar cables have different levels of capacitance. Like, this is real nerdy stuff here, but it's relevant to this conversation, okay? And then you're running in your pedal board, Every one of your pedals on your pedal board has potentiometers and capacitors. All of that cabling has capacitance. And then you're running into the front of the amp. What's an amplifier full of? Potentiometers, capacitors, cabling. And then you're running into speakers, right? So once you get to all of that stuff, does the maple fingerboard really matter? Well, no, it doesn't. Because everything you're hearing coming through the amp all has to do with what's going on underneath this pit guard, what's going on inside here, right? <clears throat> so, when people say a, a tail or a strat with maple fingerboards is broader than one with a rosewood fingerboard, they're not necessarily wrong. It just doesn't have the impact that they think it has, right? It's not like you can tell on a record if you're listening to a record you can go yep that was a maple fingerboard strat now if you're listening to acoustic guitars you might be able to go that guitar sounds kind of dark maybe it's uh maybe it's like an all you know rosewood guitar or something or that guitar is really bright maybe it was an all maple guitar you might go to hear that on an acoustic guitar but on an electric guitar with all the different kinds of amps and pedals and stuff there's no way Right. <clears throat> so I'm gonna let I'm gonna tell you some things that have much more impact on your tone. That's an audible thing that you're gonna hear besides the wood of the guitar, right? So take take my two less balls, for example. Okay. <clears throat> I did a little experiment yesterday. So these two less balls right here, the black one and the white one. They have the exact same pickup set in them, right? Fastback Custom, Beard Comer in the bridge, Old Imperial pickup in the neck. And I measured uh, the DC resistance of the pickups. Even though they're the exact same model pickups, the Black Les Paul is a little hotter in the neck pickup than the white one is, even though they're the same pickup. This neck pickup is hotter than this neck pickup. This bridge pickup in the white Les Paul is hotter than the bridge pickup in the black one. Even though they're the same model pickup, it's slightly hotter in the white guitar. All right. So that's going to affect the tone. Right. They're going to sound a little different because they have a little bit different DC resistance. Um, This guitar right here, the white list ball when I first got it, it had 100k pots in it, and those pots made the guitar sound really dark. 
and I put 500k pots in it. And now the guitar sounds a lot brighter than it did with the 100k pots in it. That's going to make a difference, right? Not all pots are the same either. Just because the potentiometers might say they're 500k pots, there's when manufacturers make these components, they're allowed tolerances, right? So even though it says 500k pot on the website or whatever when you order the potentiometer, that doesn't mean it's exactly 500k. It might be 505k. It might be 498k, right? That's going to affect the tone. The higher K pots, they let through more high end, right? So, if these pots maybe... So, this is another good example, right? The black Les Paul, it's always sounded a little brighter to me. Now, people will say, Ebony, is the Ebony finger board is brighter than the uh, Rosewood finger board. Yeah, well, sure, maybe. On an acoustic guitar, that would be noticeable. It would be relevant, on an electric guitar, it's not. The black one sounds brighter. Probably because the potentiometers are probably a, a little higher, uh, you know, homage than the ones in the white Les Paul. Or maybe the pickup is just a little brighter. Or maybe the caps, the caps are different. Maybe the capacitors are a little brighter than this, than this one. Who knows, right? But this guitar is just this much noticeably brighter if if i have the same pedal board the same amp and i plug both guitars up this one is just that much brighter and is it the wood no so there's all these different things the so potentiometers pickups even your hardware your string height your pickup height Right, your uh, your actual fret material, right? If you have nickel frets versus stainless steel frets or brass frets, right? If you're using a plastic nut over a bone nut, all of that kind of stuff is going to affect the tone of the guitar in a way that is audible to you more than the wood is going to affect it, right? So to kind of recap here, I'm not saying the wood doesn't have an effect. I'm just saying that it's negligible in an electric guitar. It only matters at an acoustic level where you can hear the natural resonance of the guitar. Once you add electronics and, uh, you know, amps and speakers and capacitors and potentiometers and all this stuff to it, the effect that the wood might have on the tone becomes completely drowned out by everything else going on. So, well, what's the point then, right? Well, what's the point of all this? The point of all this is to not get caught up in it all, right? People will spend way too much time uh, focusing on the things that don't matter, right? Let's say, oh, my guitar tone's too dark. Um, I need to get a guitar that's made out of alder or made out of uh, maple or something or, or whatever. And it's like, well, no, maybe you just need to come over to your amp and turn your presence or treble up a little more. Maybe you need to come down on your low end some. Maybe you should um, check the potentiometers in the guitar and see if they're a little lower than they advertise that they are, right? Maybe you need to swap the pots out. Maybe you need to check the capacitors. Maybe you need to see if your pickups are really dark for some reason, right? These things are going to have a lot more of an effect versus, um, you know, if you've got an ebony fingerboard or a, a rosewood fingerboard or something like that. So, what's the point of the different woods then? So, the point of the different woods, it can be an aesthetic thing. Like, take for example, this guitar I built. It has a bunch of crazy wood in it. Cherry wood, the winge, the... Uh, walnut and the canary wood and all this stuff right i didn't do any of this for like tonal stuff right i did it because it looks cool i like the way it looks like the figured top looks really nice the wingay strip in the middle looks really nice like the you know uh five piece neck looks really cool i like the way it looks right um when it comes to like the, uh, my other guitars like i prefer the way 
ebony fingerboards feel. Ebony is a little denser wood. It has a much slicker feel to it. Rosewood, uh, rosewood is a little more porous. You can kind of feel like the grain in the wood a little more. I don't like it quite as much. Um, the reason why I like maple fingerboards on straps is because they lacquer the fingerboards. So the fingerboards are super smooth because they have lacquer on them. It feels a lot more like ebony does to me. So, and as far as fenders go, I just like the way fenders look with maple fretboards. It's just always been a preference of mine. I just, I don't like the way, you see the my base and my strap both have maple fretboards. I'm just not a big fan of how Rosewood looks on Fender guitars. I just prefer the look of the maple on them. Um, especially as they age uh, and the lacquer starts to wear out, the necks get real funky looking and they get the yellowed out lacquer spots. Like they look cool. I like the way that looks, right? Um, so that's more, you know, of that. Um, so the point of all this really is just to not get hung up on the tone wood thing. You know, if you find an electric guitar you like, if you find a particular type of fretboard wood you like because of how it feels or how it looks or something like that, that's good enough. Uh, don't let people tell you, oh, you need to get this kind of wood because it's going to sound like this or like this. It's not going to have any kind of relevant impact on the tone of your guitar. Uh, your electronics, your pickups, your pedals, your amp settings, your speakers, that's going to have way more of an impact than anything to do with tone wood is on your guitar, especially your speakers. People will argue fretboard wood ad nauseum, and then they won't even know what kind of speakers are in their speaker cabinet, right? And the speaker has more to do with your guitar tone than anything else does. The speaker in your cabinet has more to do with your guitar tone than the amp does, right? But people will sit here and argue about weight-relieved mahogany versus solid mahogany. The only difference between these two Les Pauls as far as the mahogany goes is one of them weighs 9 pounds and one of them weighs 12 pounds. That's the only difference, right? The weight-relieved mahogany isn't getting the tone zapped out of it. That's ridiculous, right? Because it doesn't have anything to do with it. The only difference is this guitar is lighter than that guitar, and it's easier to play. It's easier to wear on stage for two hours. So don't get caught up in the tone wood thing. It's kind of dumb. It's not worth wasting your time on. Um, now, if you're going to start talking about acoustic guitars, that's where it's really relevant. And that's where it matters. But as far as electric guitars go, find an electric guitar you like. Find an electric guitar that looks good to you, that plays good to you. And when it comes to your tone, start thinking about how you play. Because how you play has more to do with your tone, uh, you know, than anything else outside of the speakers. Because the speakers are literally the last thing you're hearing. Uh, you know, you could have the best guitar in the world, you could play with the best technique and have the most boutique high-end amplifier, but if you have crappy speakers that sound like garbage, it's not going to matter what you do, right? They're going to sound terrible. So make sure that you have good technique, that you play cleanly and tightly, and that you have good speakers. And that's going to be 90% of your tone search or your tone battle or whatever, um, that's going to be the, the vast majority of it right there. So, um, thank you guys for tuning in the video. Um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that YouTube stuff. And, uh, thanks. We'll be back next week.